Keep going. I am acting here, and this head wanders onto my sack. Hello and welcome to Intoxicated Masculinity, where we talk about drinking culture, pop culture, politics, and anything else that comes up. Joining me as always is Kale. Hello. Jim. Hello, everybody. And Brandon. Hello, my people. All right. So today, we, uh, the other day when we were talking about this, what, what, what episode were we talking about this on? I can't remember off the top of my head now. I think it was... Uh, we're superhero movies, wasn't it? Because I think uh, yeah. Jim had brought this up when we were talking about Judge Dredd and talking about uh, uh, one Max von Sydow about actors that are very good actors but have a tendency to be in very bad movies. And we thought, hey, there's an episode in that. Um, but I think before we talk about bad actors, let's start talking about good drinks. Kit, what are you having tonight? I am rocking the kicking chicken. Nothing wrong with a good little 101. Uh, Jim, what are you having? I am just having the Pepsi. I'm Fair enough. The home and just grab. Is it a Pepsi there. One or a Pep Diet Pepsi or a? a it's Crystal just a Pepsi. Pepsi. I'm kind of partial to the Pepsi with the real sugar. Fair enough. You can't find it all over the place. Brian, what are you having? I am having some handmade from West Virginia dandelion wine. That's in, that's insane. We'll go with it. Really good. I, I'm going to bring it to you guys at some point and see what you think. Is it, is it a little bitter? No. Uh, well, I mean. So it's mostly sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it's more sweet. Yeah. Um, and I am, for no particular reason, having a big ass margarita, uh, patent pending. I bet uh, Brandon's drink's really good with some chinar in it. <laughs> Everything's good with chinar in it. I'd start cooking it if I had more of it. Moving past that Brandon is a lunatic, uh, let's jump right into it. So again, uh, <clears throat> we kind of before we started recording, we talked a little bit about how we put together our list. Um, my number one, I thought about right before we started recording because I realized I had left him off and I realized that was an absolute crime. Um, uh, Kale, uh, how did you come up with your list? Well, for me, I found it difficult to find who I thought was a good actor in a lot of bad movies or what I thought were bad movies. So I loosened the reins on myself a little bit and made it more a list of movies that I didn't think were that great personally. Um, and, or they just didn't get a lot of fanfare in general. Like it was like a poof and then it was gone kind of thing. <clears throat> Fair enough, Jim. I'm spacing, man. What was the question? <laughs> How'd you pick uh, your list? I believe, I believe Jim is on. Uh, are you on vacation right now, or are you kind of just on a trip? No, I'm hanging out with my mom Fair uh, in the middle of nowhere. Red gotcha. No. Uh, uh, so, how did you come up with your list? What was your kind of your uh, methodology? Um, so, uh, I went to Rotten Tomato and went to individual actors that I had thought of uh, that occurred to me, and kind of sorted through them and uh, sorted through their sc their scores on different movies, and looked at rotten movies and which ones, uh, which ones stood out. Um, I was surprised how many people uh, that I had in my mind as good actors that were in a lot of bad movies actually were only in like two really bad movies. And most of the rest of their stuff was pretty good. So it was, it was a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be. All right, uh, Brandon, how about you? Well, when this topic was chosen, I was on vacation. So I didn't put any real time or thought into it until today because I went immediately from vacation to having to go back to work. So I didn't think about it too much. And when I started thinking about it, I was like, eh, maybe one guy I can think of. And then when I thought of him, suddenly a second guy popped in my head. And now I'm up to the point where I have at least one honorable mention. I feel like I'm a connoisseur of bad movies. So this list wasn't uh, paring down was more difficult than anything else. Uh, my original list had about 10 or 12 uh, and I got it down to five and I think I got like three or four honorable mentions. So, all right, Kale, why don't you dive in first and give us your number five? Uh, number five, I'll start off, off, start us off easy. Michael Fassbender. Blut und Erde. Ja, was würden Sie gerne zuerst verlieren? Wir hatten unsere Befehle. Also Blut. Fassbender. 
uh, he was in some movies that weren't very popular. Uh, Prometheus, mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed, Steve Jobs, X-Men Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix, and The Snowman. Those are all movies that could have been better that he was in. Um, but he is in one movie that is probably thought of as bad movie by a lot of people, but it looks hilarious to me. It's called Kung Fury. I've not seen that one. I have not either. It looks fun. Look at, do yourself a favor and go YouTube the trailer for Kung Fury. It is ridiculous. So did the Steve Jobs movie get bad reviews or did you see it and you didn't like it? I just don't care about Steve Jobs. I mean, they like put him up on this pedestal as this tech Jesus or whatever. And it's like, you know, he just told other people to build stuff for him. So that Steve Jobs movie came out close to the same time. Another Steve Jobs movie came out. Uh, and I think this one is the, the one with Michael Fassbender is the better one. Uh, it's kind of weird though, because the one that he's in basically takes place over three events it's like the first one is the introduction of the Apple II. Yeah, they're, uh, I can't, all product, they're all product launches. Yeah, three product launches. I can't remember. I think the third one's the, the, the... I can't remember what it's called, but it's Mike, the desktop that they came out with in uh, the late 90s. Mike has no mic. There you go. Yeah, this, this is great. It's either really loud or not loud at all. Maybe it was the iMac. Is that what it was called? Yeah, that might be it. That sounds right. Um, no, I thought it was a decent movie. I, I'm a big Michael Fassbender fan. I, I think he's. I think we were talking. We're talking uh, X Men, and I think he's probably the best Magneto in my mind. So, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but he's he's been in some you know less than spectacular. Movies. Like I like. I think he's a good actor. He's obviously been in some good movies. These are just a few bad ones that he was in. Yeah. All right, Jim. What is your uh, number five? Uh, my number five doesn't have a tremendous number of bad movies, but by the way, I should state as always on this show, uh, we will set up very strict rules for how we do this and then go on to not enforce them in any way, shape or form. Absolutely. That's um, it's kind of our thing, but they were, some of the movies were really big failures and that's, uh, Kevin Costner. Is, is this heaven? Iowa. So obviously leading the list is Waterworld, uh, The Postman. I have a special hateful place in my heart for because I really, really loved the book and thought they just made a terrible movie about it. Um, the Guardian was not good. Uh, and again, he's somebody that actually had, he has a lot of good films, but, uh, and the bad ones are really bad. He was Pa Kent. He was Robin Hood. You know, the, he was married the, to Martha. The, the, <laughs> pa Kent, the Pa Kent uh, movies probably should have made it onto my list. Um, but <laughs> I actually, I actually like those better than uh, way better than uh, the popular reviews, but they were still not good movies. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, Brandon, do you have anything else to say about, um, Mr. Costner. He started to do the Bruce Willis thing where like he just makes a whole bunch of these straight to DVD movies. Well, Bruce Willis, we should we should say Bruce Willis has unfortunately had to leave acting uh, yeah. due to being diagnosed with aphasia, which is a really kind of horrible thing. Um, but yeah, Costner has done a bunch of stuff. I don't know. He, he might have kind of given but up. But he's, he's always been one of those that kind of like hits or miss because he... I think he does kind of like Daniel Day Lewis, where he only does the things that interest him. Just Daniel Day Lewis is better at it than he is, but yeah. Well, I also feel like I feel like whenever I watch a film, it's always Kevin Costner. Like he's not really playing a character; he's just playing Kevin Costner. My favorite cool. example of that is when he's in Thirteen Days, um, and he's doing maybe the worst uh, Massachusetts Boston accent ever that varies from completely non-existent to almost unintelligible scene to scene. Like it'd be like, I'm from Boston. And then the next scene, he's just like, I'm Kevin Costner. And it's like, can you just pick like one degree of Boston accent and stick with that 
degree of Boston accent or his famous uh, British accent in uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, which is like, it's uh. like an, it's like a whisper of a British accent. There's like, there's like a British person living somewhere nearby that accent. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't put that one on the list because that really was a, that was a terrible flop. I mean, I think he's maybe better as a side character. Well, to be, by the way, I like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I it has, it has great Christian Slater. It has some great uh, uh, Alan Rickman. Um, uh, who's the guy that plays the bad guy? Michael Wincott. Um, yeah. Why a spoon, cousin? Why not a sword or a knife? <laughs> but then, like, he's like he's really good in Silverado as a side character. He's the younger brother. Yeah. yeah. But- and I like Waterworld. I don't care. Waterworld's a near masterpiece. Um, almost as good as Waterworld was the Waterworld uh, themed show at I think like Universal Studios that was going on for a while. Yeah. That was actually kind of fun. I thought. Did we watch that together when we were out there? Uh-huh. Yeah, that was that was cool. That was really cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm just heaping praise upon Waterworld and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, unlike the critics and moviegoers. Um, all right, Brian, what's your number five? Uh, my number five is a guy named Brad Deeroff. You hear that, you son of a bitch? I'm gonna get you, and I'm gonna get Eddie, no matter what. Um, you might know him as the voice of the psychotic, murderous doll Chucky in the Child's Play movies. Um, those alone would probably get him on the list. Uh, he's done a few others. He kind of did a whole bunch of horror stuff when he was first starting out. Um... But he can really act, and he really is pretty good. Um, my favorite version of him is as the Doctor in uh, Deadwood. But, uh, I don't know. I, I think he's amazing. I think he's a, a kind of a lost talent. Like, like he could have been in a ton of stuff. Again, probably not a main character movie guy. You wouldn't build a movie around Brad Deeroff. But, Brandon, they did Brandon build a... They did build a bunch of movies from Brad Deroff, and I like them. <laughs> but, I mean, overall, one of my favorites. <clears throat> uh, sorry. It, by the way, I apologize to those watching. My microphone has decided it's going to just work about 90% of the time and 10% of the time. I keep on thinking you're mocking us. Uh, well, <laughs> both can be true. Both can definitely be true. Uh, no, I love Brad Deroff. Uh, so he actually... I'm going to switch my list up a little bit, but he was definitely somebody that I wanted to mention. Um, the Child's Play movies. I think uh, my favorite little role from his is a movie that nobody has watched called Urban Legend, where he plays the creepy gas station attendant who the person is afraid of. Um, but he's trying to warn her there's a guy in the back with a knife, but she doesn't pay attention because he's Brad Deeroff, except he's Brad Deeroff with long hair and like, um, and like everybody would be terrified of that. But it turns out, ah, tough shit. There was the, he was the one trying to save you. I vaguely remember Urban Legend. That's like a kind of like a teenager horror movie, right? Yeah, it's very much in the line of your your screams and your I knows what you did last summer. Um, and then I think like- actually the first the first two Urban Legends are actually pretty decent. Are they're they're worth watching? Uh, in the first one, it actually has one of the professors is played by uh, Robert England, uh, who by the way could easily have been on any one of these lists as well. Um, He's the weird, creepy doctor in uh, uh, Alien Four. That just the scientist that just loves the the xenobite. Then he gets the xenomorph, his Brandon. God, are you yeah. even a real fan? Not really. <laughs> xenomorph, xenobites. Um, <laughs> by the way, xenobites would be a great alien Hellraiser crossover. Yes. Yeah. Um, you have one alien that's just chattering. I like in Alien Four, which is an underrated film. I like Alien Four. Alien I, Four is fun to watch. Favorite. It is not what I would call a good movie. And the ending is actually pretty bad. Um, But he's got such a great cast. And and, uh, uh, Brad Deeroff, and he's like mimicking the alien in front of the other. He's like, (laughs) it's it's very good. Or not very good. It's it's fun, if not good. Um, So I'm going to go with my number five. And that is uh, not many actors have a PhD in, uh, I believe it's, is it chemistry? or astrophysics or something. Um, and few of those people uh, are also somebody who has beat up Sylvester Stallone as a Russian in uh, 
Rocky IV, and that is, of course, the great Mr. Dolph Lundgren. I must break you. Um, Dolph Lundgren does not... We lost you, Mike. Does he qu- count as a great actor? I think I think Dolph Lundgren is great at doing what he does. He is great at being Dolph Lundgren. I think he's compelling. I think he he is a certain tongue in cheek nature. He is in a uh, film that is sitting just behind Jim as the street preacher, um, uh, just hamming it the hell up. Um, <laughs> no, I love Dolph Lundgren. I think he's great, and he does. He has. It's, I can't remember, it, but he has a PhD in like a hard science. It's like chemistry or, yeah. or uh, physics or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are your guys' Dolph Lundgren thoughts? Uh, Masters of the Universe. It's empty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Universal Soldier, one of the best <laughs> Dolph Lundgren movies out there. Yeah. Who gives a shit about Jean Claude Van Damme? You're going for Dolph Lundgren the whole time. <laughs> so that means Dolph Lundgren has beat up both Sylvester Stallone and Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> and Jet Li. Well, I mean, Jet Li let that out. <laughs> Who was he in Jet Li? In the Expendables. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, and like almost Keanu Reeves too, because I don't know if he close. Um, by the way, another person in Johnny Mnemonic that probably deserves an honorable mention. I'll mention in a minute, but yeah, uh, I don't know any other Dolph Lundgren movies stick out to you guys. I feel like there's so many. Oh, uh, the Punisher, the Punisher. Yeah. I watched the as a kid. I watched the, I watched the Punisher like twenty five times. I love that movie so much. I thought like the one with Brandon Lee. Right? Oh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. That's a very good one. And Brandon Lee compliments his dick, which is, you know, I think very forward thinking and very open minded of him. Just in case we get killed, I wanted to tell you, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. Thanks. I just look at another man naked and be like, hey, that's a heck of a dick you got there. <laughs> just, oh, <cool>, great. <laughs> I guess I didn't remember that part. It absolutely happens. It absolutely <laughs> happens. Um, all right, if nobody else has anything on Mr. Dolph Lundgren, uh, Kale, let's go on to you for your number four. All right, my number four is Toby Steven. Are you saying that a significant number of unsolved crimes are committed by people in wheelchairs? It's a possibility. Well, maybe we should round you all up and put you in a cage, huh? And I won't be surprised if you don't know who that is. Uh, he was in Die Another Day, which is a James Bond movie. Uh... He was in The Machine, Hunter Killer with that uh, Gerard Butler. Um, he was in Alex Ryder and a movie called Believe, which I think was a Christian movie. I've never heard of him. Uh, uh, the one thing that he was in that I did like is the Netflix uh, Lost in Space. I thought he was good in that. I mean... I don't think that he's a bad actor. I shouldn't say it. Like, the reason I picked him is because I think that he's an underutilized actor. Like, he could be better in better movies. Well, that's the thing. It's supposed to be a good actor in bad movies. He also has done a bunch of James Bond. Like, not in the movies, but, like, uh, apparently they have, I guess, radio plays where he'll he'll play James Bond. He's done uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, Moonraker, uh, The Man with the Golden Gun uh thunderball like a bunch of from russia with love goldfinger like i guess there's a ton of these things he does kind of fit like audio book type of thing it says a radio play so it must be some kind of an audio presentation uh, i'm not sure you'd find him but that actually sounds like something that i would be interested in apparently he did 007 legends video game also oh is that it but yeah so apparently he's had a fair amount to do with uh, with james bond um he was also in a robin hood television series playing prince john so he presumably also wanted to cut somebody's stomach out with a spoon nice. <laughs> uh, i'm not too familiar with him do you, you guys have anything else you want to say about uh about mr stevens i do not new, watch new lost one to me i'll have to look him up watch lost in space on netflix He's the i've heard of, so lost in space the new lost in space it's like a little bit darker isn't it like kind of a little how could it not be it's a little grittier, um, uh, not like super different though. I mean, they basically stick to the storyline. Uh, it's a little more intense. 
because of the robot, they have more storyline about the robot. Because the robot isn't something that just came with them. It's something they found. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll definitely check. I love sci-fi. So, uh, Jim, what is your number four? Uh, so I assume that some of these movies may be controversial, but I'm going with Sean Connery. And I'm not the man I once was. Um, out, uh, Outland. It's an early 1980s science fiction movie. Not good. Uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, also not good. Highlander 2. I think it's terrible. And Highlander, Highlander, <laughs> Highlander 1, who, who I'm sure there are people on the podcast that love it, is a bad film. I'm sorry, it's you're wrong bad. about that one, but we can move on. Jim, you've already hurt my feelings three times. <laughs> um, and, first, and I, will, I will say a, a few of the James Bond movies weren't fantastic. I mean, some of the, some of them were pretty good. Uh, I would have to say, so I, I think uh, Highlander 2 is, is controversial because it definitely isn't a good movie. It's not a good movie. Um, but it is kind of fun. And isn't that the one that has uh, Michael Ironside as, as the what is he, General Krang, I think? Maybe. I remember it's not all of them. It tries to do together. something you, kind of unique. It fucks up the story, but it tries to do something kind of unique. I always had a kind of a special place for Highlander 2. By the way, Highlander 2, 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm a little shocked by that. 0%? Wow. 0%. Wow. I'm sorry, General Katana. Michael Lawrence had played General Katana. And it had John C. McGinley in it, too. Wow. I didn't know that. I want to see Michael Lawrence actually play Krang. I mean, like, his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael Ironside can go on the uh, list of actors who are bad that are only in bad movies. I think he's great. By the way, uh, plays uh, a role in Community. Uh, undeniably yeah. the best show that's ever been put on television. And nobody will even argue about it. Nope. Um, yeah. Uh, Highlander is The first Highlander is good, though. It's good. Yeah. It's. I just rewatched it with Vanessa a while ago. It's not like traditionally good, but it and, and it doesn't really have a plot exactly. Um, and Sean Connery playing a Spanish person is inherently ludicrous. Greetings. I am Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, chief metallurgist to King Charles V of Spain, and I'm at your service. Um, but in spite of all those things, it is a great. Clancy Brown is basically perfect as a villain. Um, <laughs> And I mean, my uh, Christopher Lambert is very good. He's all right. By the way, if you really want to hear somebody talk shit about League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen, just talk to Alan Moore, the person who wrote the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen comic book, and he will talk until he is blue in the face about how much he hates it. Yeah. Fair Oh, one one Sean Connery movie that is not probably good, but I love is uh, Rising Sun with him and Wesley Snipes. I, I was going to say it didn't make my list. It has terrible ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. I was really surprised. I thought I really enjoyed it when it came out. It's got such a great cast, though. It's got the guy that plays Shang Tsung. It's got Harvey Keitel. It's like, yep. it's, no, you're wrong. It's a good murder mystery. You, you are know? wrong for not liking that movie. Uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. A strong run on Celebrity SNL. Oh, yes. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so now moving on. Brandon, what is your number four? My number four is Danny Trejo. Um, Danny Trejo is, I mean, he started off as like a criminal and then he got into the prison system and, uh, and then kind of got into acting from there. And he kind of set this idea for himself. I mean, he's got a whole auto, auto, audio book, autobiography <laughs> read by him, uh, which audio autobiography. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, he kind of decided to say yes to anybody that needed him, like student films and all this. It's how he's ended up in so many bad things. 
because he just kind of goes, sure, I'll do it. You know, and he, it, you know, it depends. Like, I've heard of, for some of the more hard up ones, he doesn't charge much or anything. He just comes and has fun and does his thing. And he's legitimately good when he wants to be. I mean, he's been in such things as, like, Heat. I mean, he's been in big things. But he's just in some of the the cheesiest roles. Like, Robert Rodriguez puts him in some of the cheesiest roles, but the the, the Desperado guy with the knives and the vest, I, he's one of my favorite parts of that, and he barely says anything that entire thing. Uh, um, just a quick uh, a connection. Um Danny Trejo was in a movie called Acceleration, which, if you haven't seen it, it's got a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, so maybe don't bother. Uh, but it is uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, Dolph Lundgren, Chuck Liddell, uh, and Danny Trejo. <laughs> which, for some reason, I love that cast. Uh, so, you know, maybe check out Acceleration. Um, the audience score is not 0. The audience score is 15. So the audience... I guess also hated it, but you know, maybe you'll like it. It's possible. Our first cross connection of our two actors that were in the same movie. And he I don't think you go wrong giving Danny Trejo a shot in, in anything he's in. Like if, if you see him on there, give it a shot. He's it's sometimes it's going to be some weird. What's the, uh, machete, you know, or it's just this weird gore fest one or the sequel machete kills. Yeah. No, yeah, those, or like I said, Heat. He's going to be in something fantastic that everybody loves. I don't know. It's it's a total crapshoot, but he's always worth seeing. He's By the way, I'd like to just watch Danny Trejo and Dolph Lundgren kick the shit out of each other. Like that's, I'll watch that. If that's yeah. the movie, just that's the movie. That's that could be the title of the movie. So I I knew he was in a lot of bad films, but I will say the Rotten Tomato list list is impressive. He's in a lot. Yeah, because he just says yes to almost everything. If he doesn't have a scheduling conflict, he'll do it. I was actually just reminiscing about one of those movies today with my mom uh, when the last video store in Des Moines went out of business. Uh, Nolan and I bought some DVDs, and he insisted on getting a Danny Trejo movie and made my mom and I watch. And it was Cyborg X, rated 15%. By fans, no score. Rotten Tomatoes. And Jim, played. like I don't have Captain, that movie memorized line for line. Come on. Captain Machine Gun. <laughs> and and then really- he's like, he's in the, the Robert Rodriguez kids movies. So here's psychotic looking Danny Trejo in a kids movie. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> oh, and he was in Bubble Boy. Yeah. Um. So... Brandon took one of mine, so I'm going to change things up a little bit. It was Brad Deeroff. He's a genius. Um, the next one I'm going to go with is, uh, for my number four, is Tim Curry. So, come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. I see you shiver with anticipation. Um, I think Tim Curry is such a I think you know an actor falls in this category. Lost you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. He's just so Tim Curry. Um, like when Tim Curry is Tim Currying, nobody can out Tim Curry him. Um, I mean, whether whether he's in a, a Rocky Horror Picture Show playing, uh, you know, that character. Is it do- it's Dr. Frankenfurter, right? I think, I think it's just Frankenfurter, like the hot dog. No, but I think he's a doctor. Uh, I'd have to look. Sh- yeah, Doctor Frankenfurter. Um, I mean, he just he he's in movies. It almost his IMDb score seems to be just negligible um, because some of them are like huge, great movies, and some of them are just absolute bombs. And it seems like he doesn't really seem to care what he's just like. Yeah, and I mean, of course, I think we all know. You know, maybe the biggest one was uh, the darkness in uh, Legend. Always a pleasure. Which here is rated at 40%. And I feel like that movie should get an asterisk because Tim Curry was perfect in it. Um, his makeup was perfect. He was perfect. For that, it gets 100%. I would say the biggest one, because I haven't seen Legend, is It, the original It. But 
Actually, I think the one I remember most is Clue because yeah. Clue is absolutely it's got such an amazing cast. Uh, Madeline Kahn's in it being just like the most Madeline Kahn that she could be. Um, and uh, um, uh, Michael Keane is in it. And it's just it's just an amazing cast and a super fun movie. And, you know, Tim Curry is sort of the anchor of that movie as Wadsworth Butler. Um, and it is just a it is a nut roll of a movie. You get to watch all like the secret endings. And oh, Christopher Lloyd's in that, too. Uh, God, you forget all the people that were in that movie. I think uh, Richard Richard Mall, I think was that too. Wasn't he Colonel? Wasn't he Colonel Mustard? Sure. Yeah, I could talk about Clue. I love Clue. I don't know. What, what do you guys think, uh, Tim Curry? I think he's great. He's he's a very versatile actor. He's been in so many different things. I mean, you already mentioned a bunch of them. Uh, I'll just add a couple. Uh, he was in Hunt for Red October, and he was in Scary Movie too. I mean. How how far apart are those two things? One of the best voices out there, too. Yes, great laugh, just a great laugh. By yeah. the way, it wasn't it wasn't Richard Mole, it was Martin Mole. The one other person in Clue that I think is just amazing is uh, Lee Vang from Fear, the punk band Fear, yeah. is yeah. the one that plays Mister Body, and he's kind of his small role, but he's kind of perfect in it. A, a little aside about Lee Vang, he did a. A side project with Dave Mustaine called MD45. And then if you try and buy that album now, Dave Mustaine's gone by and, and redone it all and redone the vocals for just made it himself. It By the way, wow. don't look at look don't look up Dave Mustaine's politics these days because he's a he's a he's a bad guy. Oh, um Tim Curry though. I do have an audio book with him as a as a reader too. It's called really? Sabrina. I don't even care what the book is, I'll read it. Yeah, it was just tons. Of, his movies are just all. Over. You look at the 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 IMDb scores. He's got zero percent. He's got at least one zero percent. No, he's got multiple zero percents. He's got ones that are in their eighties, and he's got a ninety. He is all over the place. I would say that um, uh, Alan Rickman was the perfect choice for Snape, but Tim Court Curry could have done it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, all right, Kale, let's move on to you. What is your number three? My number three is Bill Duke. Over here. Uh, he was in movies such as Commando, National Security, Sister Act 2, Exit Wounds, Battle Dogs, Henry's Crime, X Men The Last Stand, and um, one that I've never heard of but it intrigues me because the title is American Satan. And you know, that's just gotta be good. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, one, one movie that he was in that was really good that I loved was Predator. Um, and I think that he's a good actor. He's, he can be really intense. He can also play really cool and calm. Uh, but he's underutilized. He, he, he was in the Kill Bill movies, too, I think. Um, but I don't want to even get into the Tarantino verse. Um, but yeah, like, I think he's a good actor. And he's kind of got uh, set aside with some of these shitty roles, I think. Um, I have two things to say about Bill Duke, because I, I love Bill Duke. I think he's great. Um my favorite line is when he was in Menace to Society playing the cop and he's so good because he just keep he's, he's grilling the main character um, and he's not yelling at him. He's just talking to him. He'll ask him a question and the guy will start to give an answer. And he's like, you know, you done fucked up, right? You know, you done fucked up right there. Now you see something. Now you see now. You done fucked up. You know that. And then he'll ask him another question. And the guy will try to answer. Him. He's like, no, you fucked up there. And but like in this totally even what he's so good at it. And also the thing I think is crazy is there's one character in the X-Men uh, called Boulevard Trask that has been played by two actors, one Bill Duke and the other one. I've uh, 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 got Tyrion Lannister from from Game of Thrones. Uh, Charles Dance. No, uh, oh. that's Tywin. Tyrion. Uh, uh, yeah. Names. Uh, names are dumb. Why can't I think of names? Peter. Dinklage. 
Peter Dinklage. And it, I mean, just imagine, you know, you've got a casting call for a character and the two actors that show up to audition are Bill Duke and Peter Dinklage. And you're like, I just can't quite decide. It's like, it's really, it's touching. It could go either way. How is this not a buddy cop movie already? Well, yeah, I, I, I totally watched that. But it's just, it struck me like two people that are so physically entirely the opposite of one another. And they both played Boulevard Trask. Uh, but yeah, Bill Duke's great. He's very good in in, uh, uh, in Predator also. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I can only point to like the two movies there, but yeah, he's good. Oh, he was in The Red Dragon too. I didn't know oh, that. by the way, I was going to mention... That. Uh, what was that, Cam? I was going to mention Exit Wounds is a Seagull movie and uh, Henry's Crime has uh, Keanu Reeves in it. Uh, he was also in Mandy, which is a Nicolas Cage horror movie. A lot of people like it, and I'm sorry. I'm just not on board, I'm just not on board for that one. I apologize. Sorry. Sorry, Mandy fans. Didn't like it. Thought it was terrible. Uh, Jim, what is your number three? All right. This person could make the list just because of one series that they were in. It's Kate, Kate Beckinsale. Um, By what so, series are you talking about, Jim? <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, she, was, she was in the Hot Mess remake of Total Recall. Um, Van Helsing was particularly bad. It was a, an awful, awful summer for films. That Van Helsing was one of the more entertaining things that came out that year. And then she was in Underworld, Underworld Rise of the Lycans, Underworld Awakening, Underworld Blood Wars, Underworld Evolution. I'm sure there's probably an Underworld Underworld or something that I've forgotten. And uh, although I think if you're up at one o'clock in the morning, they're probably fine to watch. They're really, really not good movies. You know, I'm just looking at her on, on Rotten Tomatoes and holy cow, it's just like bad. <laughs> like she's got a couple of really good movies, but other than that, it's just like shit after shit. So she, she was a, a hidden gem that I found in my search. <laughs> she was in a zero percenter. Uh, we should put that in, you know, to see if our people were in zero percenters. It was called The Disappointments Room. Um, and the audience <laughs> liked it only 17% more than the 0% critics liked it. So, yeah, really, so really interestingly, it, if, you go, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes and they sort them by year initially, like she's only had one highly rated film in like the last 15, 16, 17 years. It looks I, like I no it looks like she was in The Truth, uh, uh, Nothing But The Truth in, in uh, 2008, which is 82%. Uh, the next thing that was halfway decent was Love and Friendship, which was 96% in 2016, and then nothing since then. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kale, uh, Kate Beckinsale. Um, she's pretty. Do you want her to Kate Beckinsale away? I, I I don't think there's a great actress, and so it doesn't surprise me that she was in a lot of movies that weren't good. Um, Brandon, you did you watch any of the Lycans or Rise of or Unders Unders the World? Yeah, accidentally, kind of like I don't remember where I was, but somewhere on a, a like a vacation or something, they were playing the first two over and over. So I saw the first two a few times. Um. But, so. I have a weird connection. I just watched. Uh, so the original uh, uh, Underworld movie had Scott Speedman, um, who was, I think, at that, that point, kind of a rising star. And he was just in the new Cronenberg film, which is Crimes of the Future, um, which is uh, a very Cronenberg movie. <laughs> and I don't I don't know if I understood it or liked it or got it or anything. But Scott Speedman, Underworld, Kate Beckinsale, Away, Come Sail Away. Scott Speedman looks like the lead singer of Creed. I feel like Scott Speedman looks like somebody. He looks like a leading man, but just looks like a leading. Like he, like you would mistake him for like Hugh Jackman or like Colin Farrell. Like, so, like, like he looks like he looks like somebody else. As far as Underworld goes, I'll say two words: Bill Nighy. 
Yeah, he was good. All right, uh, Brandon, you're number three. Uh, this one might be one of the most obvious picks for me, but uh, I went with Bruce Campbell. It's over! <laughs> um, I mean, Army of Darkness is not a great movie by any cinematic standards, but man, is that a fun movie. One of the few, like, maybe three or four movies in my life that I had memorized at one point. Um, he was also really good in the television series. Oh, what was that one? with The, the Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. No, Burn Notice. Um, I thought you liked The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. I don't think I ever saw it. Really? I watched Burn Notice. Yeah. But he was really good in Army of Darkness, really good in uh, the uh, Evil Dead movies. Both the Evil Dead movies, again, aren't terribly great. Uh, he's one of the... I mean, the new Stephen Strange movie was entertaining, but I don't know if I would call it good, necessarily. But he was fun in it for the brief moments he was in it. I don't know. Anytime Bruce Campbell shows up, it's worth it. Just real quickly, perusing his, his Rotten Tomatoes, he actually is reasonably positive. I mean, he's been in some stinkers. Don't get me wrong. I uh, think people really like him, regardless. By the way, the one the the un the unseen gem of Bruce Campbell is Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep is a masterpiece. It is an absolute masterpiece of a film. Um, I, I will hear nothing negative about that movie. It is about Elvis Presley faking his death and then growing old and being in a nursing home with John F. Kennedy, who's been dyed black, fighting a zombie, a mummy. Or mummy, I'm sorry, that, that yep. crashed in Texas. It's just like, it is a banana pants movie and it's hilarious. And by the way, of course, how does the mummy steal people's souls? He sucks them out their assholes. Because of uh, course you would. How else would it be done? I mean, that's the only way you do it. I couldn't include Bruce Campbell on this list. I, I like him too much. But that's the thing. I'm picking people I like, not bad they're supposed to be good actors. I, I like his movies, even if they are campy. No, I mean, it's, it's sort of funny. I think of all the actors we've picked so far, Bruce Campbell is maybe the one that uh, his Rotten Tomato page would probably give you the, the worst argument because he's been in so many good movies. I'm uh, really surprised at the rankings of Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. They have tremendous rankings. They're, I mean, they're called favorites. It doesn't surprise me. I, I don't really love Evil Dead 1 that much. I think it's kind of... I don't know. Evil Dead 2 is, is clearly what they're moving to. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, and I, this is where I highly recommend Brandon watch The Avengers of Briscoe County Jr. Because it's Bruce Campbell in the 90s being a... You know, Bruce Campbell. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move on to my number three. Um, replacing the one that Brandon stole. Like a thief. Um, and this one might make people angry, and I'm sorry if it does, but uh, John Cusack. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Um, uh, is John Cusack is... He's not in bad movies, though. He's in a lot of bad movies. He's in a whole bunch of bad movies. Yeah, let's find out what Mike thinks a bad movie is. I'm just <laughs> saying, you, you look down his Rotten Tomatoes, and he's... John doesn't read a lot of scripts before he takes parts sometimes, I think. Um, I think he's great. I love him. But um, he is in a whole lot of really shitty movies. Um, is he with Kate Beckinsdale and Serendipity? No, probably. Okay, they do. They rate Con Air as 55%, and that's just wrong. Con Air, was a, Con Air is a fun movie. Um, it's like, the I don't know. No, that's wrong. But no, he's in a lot of really bad movies, um, but I still love him. He's got at least one zero percent. Let me see here. He's got a 4%, another 0%. So he's got two zeros. I mean, you can't say that's not a valid choice if you got multiple 0%. I would whip up my picture of me and John Cusack from Wizard Comic Con, but uh, Wizard World, but uh, I don't have it accessible right now. But does, I, anybody, does anybody I, else want to blaze me for picking John Cusack as uh, this list? What no. movies did he make that you don't like? A so lot. I will I will say that um, I feel like he has a tremendous number of movies that I don't even know what they are. 
uh, and most of them don't have good scores. And I feel like he's an actor that I felt like disappeared, but apparently he didn't disappear. He just made a lot of bad movies that I was never aware of. But he also made like three of my all-time favorite movies. So I'm not saying, by the way, he's also in a movie called 1408, uh, which is one of the all-time best like haunted house, in this case, haunted room uh, movies you'll ever run across. That movie's a masterpiece. Um, that being said, watch. he's I in 2012 watch. and serendipity and America's sweethearts and watch high fidelity and then try not to watch it again at some point. Oh God. Gross point blank. Yeah. Gross point blank. One crazy summer. Like I said, I'm not saying those aren't good movies. I'm just saying he's also made a lot of pretty bad ones. Um, So Brandon, real quick, we're going to have a mini discussion. High fidelity, the television show. Oh, that's really good too. I have a really hard time with that because the thing is, John Cusack looks like a sad sack. Like he looks like somebody that like you could expect, like isn't going to get dates or whatever. Lost you, man. Yep. See, John Cusack heard you say that. And then- yeah, I know. I know. I'm back. <laughs> God damn it. Um, no, but then they make the TV show and they make it Zoe Kravitz. Who's like, you know, probably if you look at any top 100, attractive women of the year list she's going to be like top five in all of those and it just seems unrealistic it's like let's put it let's make a movie about a supermodel who just can't quite get a date yeah but i think she acted it well i i I thought she played the part well of like you know i i don't think you could do john cusack again because that's john cusack i I don't know but i I think they were right to go out a little bit but then just don't cast a supermodel. <laughs> like, just don't cast a supermodel in the part. <laughs> like, cast a woman that looks like a regular, like, person. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Kale, let's move on. What is your number two? Well, I just realized I have an admission here. My number two was Bill Duke. But I read him off as number three. So now number three is number two. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, Christopher Eccleston. Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. So was I. Uh, he was in Thor The Dark World, Gone in 60 Seconds, 28 Days Later, G.I. Joe, and The Seeker. Oh, G.I. Joe. Kind of so like bad. Harry Potter meets the Infinity Stones or something. I don't know. First um, of the new uh, Doctor Who's, too. Yeah. And... and all of those movies weren't great, uh, but he is a good actor. I think. I think uh, apparently he has a, a pretty good following from uh, some British TV shows where he came. He did a lot of British stuff before we really got to know him. I think he was uh, actually born in British. I, yeah, say British. I think he, I think he's from British people land, and. Uh, he, I think he's a good, solid actor. Like he comes off on the screen as as someone who who would uh, have a presence, like like uh, like Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen. But he never gets those roles. He's always cast as this. When he is like the main baddie, he's he's uh, always like a not good baddie. <laughs> he's like nobody that you should worry about. And I think that he deserves better. I think that he is perfect for a list like this uh, because I agree. I think he's a really good actor. I think he's good in a lot of things. And I think he has no idea how the fuck to pick a right part. Like, I think he, he's, I think he is really bad at picking roles like Malekith. So Malekith in Thor, the dark world, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was the, the first pick for that. And Benedict Cumberbatch was like, Nope. Um, and Benedict Cumberbatch did that. And he was right to do that. Cause it was a shitty role. Like nobody in that role is good. Because th- that role is nothing. I mean, you look at that role, that 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 character in the script, and it's just nothing. It's just it's. You could have a cardboard cutout play the part, and it wouldn't make any difference. Um, and I think Christopher Eccleston, while, while he's a great actor, is really really bad at picking parts, or has a really shitty uh, agent, um, because he he could do better. So was his role in Thor: The Dark World and GI Joe essentially the same villain? I mean, it might as well have been. Right. 
a card, well, cardboard character wearing a cardboard mask. One was a apparently almost uh, undying dark elf guy, and 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 in GI Joe he was Chrome Dome. I don't think I realized he was Malik. Yeah, that's because it's nothing. It's a like you watch the movie again. He's nothing. There's just nothing there. It's a nothing role. Like and you then, put the you put the greatest actor in the world as Malik in that movie, and it doesn't matter because there's just nothing there. You're just working with nothing. We've covered this at least a couple of times. I think that the the character that really kind of stole the spotlight from the bad guys was cursed. I mean, he was the one that kind of got a lot more highlight in the movie. I don't think anybody stole the spotlight in that movie because I don't think there was a spotlight to steal. It was yeah. just, it was just a movie where there's like, I don't know, some things happen, I guess. Like that's, that was the first draft of that script. Like people like fight or stuff. I don't know. That's all I got. Um, I'm going to need you to climb all the way up. Because <laughs> <laughs> the movie has to happen. <laughs> Uh, all right, Jim, what is your number th- two? Three? All right, so two. this is uh, an actor that inspired me to uh, suggest this topic, Max von Sydow. Uh, You're wrong! I know. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> going to tell you this, this list of bad movies. There are some on there that I like, but there's still bad movies and there's some on there that I'm sure other people in the podcast really like that are still bad movies. The most controversial I'm going to say is Conan, which is probably like my favorite fantasy movie of all time, but I don't think it's a good movie. Um, he plays the, uh, the King whose daughter gets stolen. He gives Conan all the jewels to go save her. Hey, but somebody oh. stole my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> And then oh. they go get drunk and he falls asleep in his soup. Exactly. Uh, another movie that we've talked extensively about uh, on here is Dune. He plays the uh, Imperial Ecologist Dune. Uh, Exorcist 2, which really is a terrible follow-up to Exorcist. Um, here's one that... It's funny because Exorcist 3 is actually kind of weird... I don't know if it's good, but it's it's at least weird enough to be interesting. Um, how about Judge Dredd? I kind of like Judge Dredd. And I think Max is pretty good in Judge Dredd. <laughs> but it's not a good film. And then finally, uh, I would say a, a classic of the genre, and it's a bad genre, Flash Gordon. I feel like Flash Gordon's acceptable. Where would you rate Needful Things? I gotta be real honest. I never watched it. What about my matter to you? I don't. I feel like it's something that like I had for a long time and then just never watched it. Okay, Brandon, are you looking at Rotten Tomatoes right now or no? No. Okay, just off the top of your head, what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes score for Needful Things is? I was surprised. 76? It is 31. Really? That is such say. bullshit. I mean, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but it's a solid film. Yeah. It's not great, but it's okay. It's not 31. I mean, it's Judge Dredd's 22, and there is no way Needful Things is only 9% better than uh, Judge Dredd. By the way, we're on record last week of saying that Judge Dredd is, in fact, that bad. And I believe that the 24, 22% it has on Rotten Tomatoes is a gift. <laughs> in fact, I think for Judge Dredd alone, they should be inventing negative ratings. Judge Dredd should get negative 5% rating. <laughs> because it is, it is, as I said, the worst comic book movie ever made by far. Nothing even comes close. I like the robot in it. The robots are not War. <sighs> yep, that's it. Kale, do you have any Max von Sydow thoughts, needful things, or anything else? He was in Minority Report. Yeah, he was really good in that. I, I feel like that's I, an underrated I, I, in, I, I liked Needful Things. I liked Flash Gordon. Or, uh, I don't know. I, I agree that he's a good actor, 
I don't necessarily agree with all the movies you're shitting on, but yeah, you really you really like Dune. Wasn't he in uh, the Nuremberg one? Judgment oh, of Nuremberg. Charlie. Yeah. Which which one? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe it wasn't in there. He wasn't in, the original. I think he wasn't in, but um, the other one, I just went away from it. He was in a movie called Citizen X, which I always thought was pretty good. Uh, precursor today's. Uh... I think you might have cut. We lost you. Am I back? I am. Back. Zang. Um, it's uh, an HBO original movie that came out back in 95 about this serial killer in Russia named Andre Chikatilo. And uh, uh, he was in it. He was good. It's a good movie. All right. That being said, Brandon, what is your number two? Okay. So my number two and my number one are so obvious that, Mike, I'm going to hope that you have picked these two. Because they definitely deserve to be on the list. But I'm going to trust that you picked them. And I'm going to move to an audible. Okay. I, I think I... If I haven't picked at least one of them, I'm going to be amazed. We've watched the same. With, I mean, for for those first joining the show, Brandon and I were watching movies, and Kale were watching movies like the same movies for like ten years. So I feel like we have some idea of each other's picks of what we're going to like and not like. So I'm I'm just going to call an audible and go to uh, one of my favorites, Johnny Lee Miller. What's up? Um, he was in uh, Eon Flux, Train Spotting, Dracula 2000, Elementary, the far superior Sherlock Holmes show. Um, uh, what's the one with uh, Hackers? One of my my first introduction to Johnny Lee Miller was in Hack Hackers. Really good. I always enjoy everything he's in. Oh, there's another one, a, a British movie. Uh, maybe it's not British. Maybe it's kind of French. Let's see if I can find it real quick. He was also in Dexter. It was it yeah. Dangerous Liaisons? Yeah, Dexter. He was really good in Dexter. Plunkett and McLean. That's the one. Uh, yeah, Johnny Lee Miller. Uh, always entertaining. Never in, like, anything really... Well, train spotting's probably the biggest, but... Was he the main bed... Guy and Aeon Flux. I think so. He was in uh, one of those crime dramas like Kiss the Girls or The Bone Collector or something like that. Kiss the Bone Girls? Along Came a Spider? No. Those movies all ran together to me. I don't, they all seem like the same movie. Um, no, uh, yeah, I, th I think he's great. Um, he's kind of one of those. He, he sort of reminds me a little bit. You remember the lead actor from uh, uh, the Leftovers, uh, J uh, Justin Justin Throw. I, I don't know that movie. I don't think the show, the left, the HBO show, Leftovers. Were you know? Oh, half oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, they kind of. I feel like they kind of have similar energy or whatever. I can see that. That came up on one of the filmographies for one of the people I was looking at. I don't remember which one. If it was, it might have been Toby Stevens or Christopher Eccleston. The Leftovers is a really unique show, and you kind of have to be in the right mindset <laughs> for it. Yeah. Um, you kind of, if you want to go into that movie correctly, just don't go into it hoping to get any answers, um, because you actually do get answers, but the answers are not as are not supposed to be there to be fulfilling. It's really kind of a I don't know, self-exploration kind of weird thing. It's good, but good in a really weird way. All right, so that was your number two, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, give me a thumbs up if this is one of the two actors that you would expect me to put at the top of my list. Um, he's in everything, um, whether it's your alien, uh, your Terminator, um, your hard's target with Mr. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and that is, of course, Lance Henriksen. Boudreaux is the target. 
target we're after. You are a fucking buffalo. Move. Um, he is he is bishop. Oh, don't give me that look. He's great. He is. It's just not one of my two. Well, there you go. Um, he's in a whole bunch of bad movies. I mean, just bad movies. I mean, he was in that uh, Hellraiser Debtor, which is maybe the worst title of a movie that I can imagine. Um, it could have been Debtorest. Yeah, but it was Debtor. I mean, it's it's no. Excuse me. He wasn't in Debtor, so. This is going to be bad. So, uh, 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 Detter was the one that came before the one Lance Henriksen was in, which was slightly better. He was in the sequel, which was even worse, which is uh, Hellraiser Hellworld, which is just so far down the shitter of Hellraiser movies. It's not quite the bottom of the barrel because they still got Doug Bradley for like, you know, you look at that movie, they had Doug Bradley for like probably three days of shooting at the most. They were like, he was like, I'm putting on the makeup twice so you need to get all your shots in that time um and uh yeah but he's in, he was in aliens versus predator uh which is also a bad movie but he was good in it i know lance Henderson's great um he's got a great like arr, like voice and he's got like a deep crazy voice even though he's like small and i don't know all right uh lance Henderson thoughts uh, he, he is really good go ahead cam it wasn't me, it was Brandon. Oh, sorry. You know, Lance Henriksen is great. And, uh, I mean, it, it's... He wasn't one of my ones that I thought of. But he definitely deserves to be on the list. I like Lance Henriksen. Uh, I'm just going to say I love Terminator, the 1984 movie, but I cannot believe that it has a 100% score. Oh, another movie you didn't mention that he was in, Powder... Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was in uh, Aliens, obviously, which I find Aliens to be overrated. Uh, and I think Alien 3 is better than that, which I know puts me in a uh, very small minority. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, it's just a better movie because Aliens wasn't actually that great of a movie. Uh, it had a great cast and a lot of people that were good in it, but Alien 3 was a better movie. Um, even even the entirely weird, abridged shit that they ended up coming out with was better. Um he was also in a movie called Horror Show, which is strange. So I recently watched the House movies. The House movies were these weird uh, movies about houses, um, you can imagine. Um, and so the third movie got released, but they took away the House 3 name and called it Horror Show instead. And Lance Henriksen is in it. And it's actually so it's rated at zero uh, percent, which is crime. Uh, that is not a zero percent horror movie. That is that is a solid like fifty three percent horror movie. It's not like great or good, but it's got some funny stuff in there. It's got a great villain, and it's got Lance Henriksen. Uh, he was in Pumpkinhead, which is a great horror movie. Um, he was in he was in The Omen too. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know he played in that one. Uh, he was in Piranha Two, uh, The Nightmare. Uh, excuse me, uh, The Terminator. He's just great. He's great. He's great in everything. Um, anybody else, any final thoughts on Lance Henriksen and why he is clearly a fantastic choice and great in everything? Oh, uh, Near Dark, Near Dark, one of the best vampire movies ever made that nobody's ever seen. Uh, it's got him and Tim Thomerson and Bill Paxton and uh, Adrian Pazadar um, and just this great weird cast that just kind of pop in out of nowhere. You got to see it. So I, I will just say uh, everyone should avoid the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie that he's on hard target. It is why i think you should watch it just for lance henriksen yeah he's good and lance is good <laughs> and he was in stone cold i forgot he was in stone cold with brian bosworth <laughs> that's not a good movie by the way <laughs> all right uh enough of me gushing about lance henriksen uh kale uh well actually let's go uh do you guys have any honorable mentions kale i do um i okay first of all uh, I have four of them, and they they range. So my uh, my my safe ones are going to be uh, Nicholas Cage, and all of these guys that I'm about to mention have all fallen into the same trap of just making movie after movie after movie, after movie and just 
chugging them out one after another. And so many of them are crap. Uh, but as far as Nicolas Cage goes, um, I did see a couple that did kind of pique my interest. Uh, I know uh, Mike said that Pig was really good. So I kind of want to see that. And uh, after what he just said about Mandy, I just want to see it more now because I was like, okay, this is weird, but I want to see it just so I can figure out what the hell is going on. Um, but anyway, a pig, and I've said this before, and I'll just say it very briefly, um, is a really, really great movie. Uh, it, no, no bullshit, no campiness. It is just a really, really well-made film. Um, and Nicolas Cage is, is fantastic in it. He should have gotten the Best Actor nomination because um, I saw the Best Actor nominees, and he was better than at least a few of them. But the thing is, he's made roughly 5,000 movies, and about 14 of them are good, and the rest are just fodder. Um, and then uh, Stallone, he just keeps making them. There's like Rocky 5 or 6 or something, and Rambo 5 or 6 or something. But I think the, in the Rocky series and in the Rambo series, I think the reason he did the last couple of them, if you've, if you've seen him, is because that's kind of like his farewell to that character. Because um, he kind of makes it sound like like he's walking away. And I really just think it's probably about time for him to retire. I mean, he's an action hero. But he's old. He can't be an action hero anymore. So you've earned your stripes. Go live your life. Retire. And uh, honorable mention, uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, a lot of straight to DVD movies toward the end of his career, um, but great actor. Made a lot of entertaining movies, um, and as we said, you know he's he's bowed out now uh, due to health reasons. I do have one dishonorable mention, and that is because he is responsible for the crappy movies that he keeps churning out, and that is Steven Seagal. Where'd you teach that? Where'd you learn that? Where did I learn it? Well, I learned it, you know, uh, you know, sort of a, a variation of that in Japan probably 30, 40 years ago, and I've been perfecting it uh, all these years. It's not exactly karate, it's just something that I create. Uh, I've, I've heard just horror stories about people trying to work with him and how uh, he's just, he's all ego and just, just got this tough guy act going on, even though now he's like 60 and, and fat and whatever. And he's just like, I'm still like the biggest badass in the world. You better do what I want. Uh. It's and funny, as, as the movie's gone on, went on, his coats kept getting bigger. <laughs> he's just wearing bigger and like, I'm not, it's just, I'm wearing huge coats now. I'm just into coats. Older, fatter, and more goatee. And just, and I don't want to piss him off because he could probably still kick my ass. But at the same time, it's like, dude, just just stop. Like, it's it's like when you're doing something really stupid and someone says, hey, you should probably stop doing that. And he just keeps doing it. He's like, no, this is awesome. This is the greatest movie in the world. No, it's not. Just stop. Go away. Please go away. <laughs> stop touching things. And that is the, uh, you know, the mentions that I will honor today. Um, I wanted to mention the Nicolas Cage thing. And I, I feel like Nicolas Cage sort of deserves special mention. He was given an entire episode of Community, the greatest show ever, um, where uh, Abed is tasked with deciding whether or not Nicolas Cage is good or not. Um, and the task nearly drives him insane. Oh, I'm a cat. I'm a sexy cat. Uh, and I sort of feel the same way because Nicolas Cage makes so much absolute garbage. And then every so often he'll make a great film and you're like, are you good or are you terrible? I don't know. I, I feel, don't. When they let him off the reins, he loses his shit. He just goes crazy. Is he a genius? Is he an artistic genius or is he just weird and odd and not fun to watch? I don't know. Why Jim. is he screaming the alphabet? At <coughs> Jim, uh, honorable mentions. Uh, so uh, this gentleman did not make my list because he didn't have enough bad films, but some of the bad films that he has are pretty pretty bad. And that's Forrest Whitaker. 
Um, so I love Bloodsport, but it's not a good film. Uh, he was in Species, which is terrible. Hey, Bloodsport? And... What's that? Did you say Bloodsport? I did. I love Bloodsport, but it's not a good film. I don't remember Forrest Whitaker. Did Forrest Whitaker's not in that. He's one of the officers. Yeah, he's one of the cops trying to... Oh, capture. shit, you're right. He is, isn't he? I totally forgot about that. <laughs> right? Because that couldn't possibly be Forrest Whitaker in a bad Jean-Claude Van Damme film, but it is. Um, and then the uh, cherry complaint on top, retracted. Uh, the cherry on top is Battlefield Earth. He plays one of the aliens in Battlefield Earth. The cherry's ghost dog. Like a, like a big chunky dude like doing like ninja, and you're like, no, nah, it's not working, man. I'm sorry. I mean, there, there's the like the 10 minute chase scene in uh, in Bloodsport with the across the fantastic boat. 80s tune. Yeah, it's so like can Jean Claude Van Damme outrun Forrest Whitaker? And it's like, we'd well, hope so. <laughs> um, he can then he's got problems. Uh, somebody else that I considered, but his bad movies weren't quite bad enough uh, was Tom Cruise. So I'm not a big fan of Days of Thunder. The Mummy was terrible. Um, the second Jack Reacher movie was terrible. Uh, I really didn't like Vanilla Sky, but maybe I just didn't understand it. Um, there is something mesmerizing about him, though. I watch almost every movie he comes out in. Yeah, he's uh, he's probably my number one actor that I dislike, but he, I often like him in movies, even though yeah. I feel like I dislike him. Yeah, he's clearly a lunatic. Like he's Definitely. clearly a, like there's there's not even a discussion, right? Like he's a lunatic. He has yeah. alien ghosts in his blood. We won't even get into Scientology because you know. It's probably All right. blood. Brandon, that what is your? Do you have you have one honorable mention? Am I um, taking? No, I have more. It's just, man, do I trust you to put the? Do I guess one, put up one honorable mention and guess if you've picked the other, the correct choice? That's the real question. Well, you can but it first. Don't worry about Before it. that, I will say Tim Thomerson. Why does she keep butting in on us? Because I happen to be his wife. So am I. Ladies, please. <laughs> William Sadler. Oh, I can't believe I didn't say Tim Thomerson. Tim Thomerson's great. He's so good. What's he is. Tim Thomerson. One of the most fun actors. I mean, Near Dark, Trancers, Air America, uh, Doll Man, all of them. You could go watch all of them. Um, Tim Thomerson, William Sadler, Billy Zane, and Leif Schraber. Um Billy Zane, really? Yeah. Billy yeah. Zane is. Billy Zane has been in a lot of bad movies. Yeah. What is and he? And he's been yeah. fun in a lot of them. Like I, I mean, the the perfect Billy Zane role is uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Fuck this cowboy shit! You fucking hold up, hold up. Well, they in there, motherfuckers. Well, I'll tell you what, Billy Zane, because there's always a community co uh, connection, uh, was in an episode of Community as uh, the Honda like rap guy, um, who has always had to disappear. So like, anytime he was leaving a room, he would like point like somewhere and he would like hide behind like a tree or something <laughs> so he could seem like he disappeared but he was like clearly visible and uh yeah okay. Billy seems great so my uh, original number two and I don't know if this is the one that Mike has picked as number one but I gotta say it because he's gotta be on the list is Christopher Lambert there can be only one it's not the one I picked but yes deserves to be there Christopher Lambert should be on this list. Should almost head this list. If it wasn't for my number one, he would be number one. Um, Christopher Lambert. I mean, the you know the Highlander movies. He's excellent in um, Mean Guns, Adrenaline. Uh, what's the the space prison one? That one's oh. Uh, I'll look it up. Just anything he's fortress. In. It was fortress, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Just anything he's in is worth watching. It's worth your time because you'll be entertained by it. it. It won't be a good movie necessarily, but you'll be entertained. Then he'll be in Ghost Rider Spirits of uh, Vengeance with little things all over his face. 
He was raiding. <laughs> he was a. You're not talking again. I think you were cursing, and your computer cut you off. <laughs> he was. He was a fun Raiden. He really was. Like, if you watch Mortal Kombat, like he says shit and then kind of giggles to himself. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> Sorry. And I don't know if that was in the script. Like he's like, and you won't be able to defend yourselves at all. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck does that mean? And his accent is one of the best too. Like it, it's, it's just a Scottish accent, but he just he almost like whispers his words. No, like, he's French. He's French. That's a it's a uh, well whatever. Like <laughs> well, uh, he's great. He's great. <coughs> um. My honorable mentions, uh, how has this man been sitting over Jim's shoulder for all this time? We haven't even mentioned Ice-T. Um, Ice-T's great. He's been in some of my favorite little like 90s like gangster movies, and, and he was in Johnny Mnemonic. But Johnny Mnemonic also has another honorable mention. I didn't even write down uh, uh, Henry Rollins, uh, who yeah. just pops up randomly in places. He's great. Um, Mickey Rourke, I think, is somebody who is a very good actor uh, and also pops up in a whole bunch of really bad movies. Um, Christopher Walken has been in like a million bad movies and he's great. Uh, and I was going to mention Nicholas Cage, but we kind of already talked about him. So Kiefer Sutherland. Who? Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland as the doctor in Dark City. Yeah. Um, there's a, a great, uh, at the, the roast of Dennis Miller, one of the other comedians was roasting Dennis Miller, but Kiefer Sutherland was there. Um, and he was talking about uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. He was like, you know, uh, they were talking about Kiefer and uh, he was so broke when he was a kid, he had to sleep in his car. And he was like, so what it was, what was it like sleeping in a Jaguar XKE parked in front of your father's mansion? <laughs> also in community, when they go down into the hole and they're trying to figure out what decade, like they closed off. He's like, they must have closed this place off in the seventies. And the other person was like, how do you know? Cause there's a thing over says over there that says who's sexier, uh, 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 shit, Elliot Gould or Donald Sutherland. Wow. Neither. Right. Second total was the seventies. Kale, we have reached the peak. What is your number one? The climax. The point of acclamation. Um, All right, let's not push it too hard. My number one is Kurt Russell. Call me Snake. Uh, he did movies like Overboard, Hateful Eight, Death Proof. He did a movie called Elvis in 1979, not to be confused with 3,000 Miles to Graceland with Kevin Costner and a few other people. I believe uh, Christian Slinger was in that as well. Uh, Tango and Cash with, as aforementioned, Stallone. Um, and then Ninja? in The Christmas Chronicles. Yeah, where he suddenly good. turned into Tim Allen. Are you gonna not gonna say the the, the best movie of his? Well, yeah. the movie. Okay, there's two movies that he was in that some people might say are bad that I actually liked. Uh, of course, the first one is Big Trouble in Little China, and the other one is Soldier. I actually liked that movie. <laughs> but those aren't the best movies. Okay, well, what do you think his best movie was? Tombstone. I would say uh, Escape from New York is the most Kurt Russell that I can imagine. Because he has done a handful, or, or more than a handful. He's done a, probably a dozen or more good movies, but he's done these other bad movies, too. He was a very good writer. And the reason that uh, I chose him is because he made the most sense to me to top this list because i think he is a really good actor i like him in a lot of the stuff he is but he he did do a couple of stinkers um so soldier is one that i thought sorry just a second isn't soldier supposed to be like a sequel to uh one of his other, to uh, escape from new york or something i don't no. think so I can't find it right like now. Train from a boy to Oh no no. So I'm sorry, Soldier is a side quote to Blade Runner, not not uh Escape from New York. 
Um, so it's a soldier is supposed to, it, they don't have the rights or anything, but it's sort of made as to be related uh, to Blade Runner. Okay. I did not pick up on that. I didn't either. I, I saw it in a, in a trivia. He gets discarded on a junk planet and ends up having to fight off the new, the and replacements, yep. the people that have that are better and stronger and faster and smarter than him. By the so way, I have not seen Bone Tomahawk, but everybody says it is just a really, really solid movie. Um, I've got it on DVD. I've just never sit down, sat down and watched it. So I have a few movies like that. I have the the DVD or whatever, and like the plastic still on the thing because I haven't done it out. Oh, we should talk about Stargate. So Stargate's a big nerd property, and I think the movie is not really super well regarded. But but uh, there was the you know led to a show and all this other stuff. Uh, which I have seen none of. Do you guys know Stargate at all? Have any of you guys watched Stargate stuff? I saw I watched like two I, episodes and hated it, and I've never watched anything since. Well, Jim, except, you know, except I will say they had some sort of weird side spinoff show that I decided to watch where they were on a ship somewhere. Yes. I'm like, I actually really like this. Movie really Stargate. And then Stargate SG-1. And then Stargate Universe, I think it's called. That's the one where they're on the ship with yeah, the, one uh, the guy from Once Upon a Time who played uh, Rumpelstiltskin. And he's been in. Oh, uh, Robert Carlyle. Okay. Uh, yeah. one, other, one other honorable mention from uh, Kurt Russell is Executive Decision because Executive Decision had the balls <laughs> to kill off. Steven Seagal in the first like 10 minutes of the movie because like Steven Seagal is on this thing and he's supposed to be like the tough like Navy SEAL or whatever who's going to help Kurt Russell out and uh, like he gets killed like as soon as they hook up he, get, he gets killed uh, what, was, other, what other movie has done that that's right it was Feast where the hero oh uh, yeah yeah oh. gets killed almost instantly <laughs> Feast is the whole thing um and yeah, by the way, Kurt Russell is also in 3,000 Miles to Graceland, which is not a good movie. Um, and then, of course, they bring Kurt Russell back for uh, to be Peter Quill's father in uh, Guardians, of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, or better known as Ego. Um, Jim, your number one. Uh, before I get to number one, I'm just going to say that um, my favorite Kurt Russell movie is The Thing. That's a pretty good one. Is what? All That's right. Carpenter. Carpenter being a badass with uh, 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 practical effects. All right, number one is the this guy right here, Keanu Reeves. Bill, what? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Keanu. I mean, Keanu. Um, so he has some bad films that, well, not bad films, but not great films that I kind of like. Um, a uh, big fan of Point Break, even though I don't know how good of a film it is. But uh, on the naughty list for Keanu Reeves is uh, everything that he made after the first Matrix movie. All the other Matrix movies I really did not like. Um, the Day the Earth Stood Still. Terrible. Uh, Constantine, I thought, was entertaining but not not a good film <laughs> the, the second bill and ted's movie was not a good film and he could be number one on this list just because the movie had behind me johnny mnemonic which i thought was terrible it has a has a lot of decent people in it and it's it's a bad movie yeah. have you seen 47 ronin I, I very much like that Mike was not able to disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> still can't. And, and still Your Mike, computer will not let you say nice things about Johnny Mnemonic because it knows the better. Universe getting back. <laughs> <laughs> How can you? Everybody shits all over Constantine. Whatever. I will say this. It's I can't say okay, anything bad about Keanu 
because he apparently is like one of the kindest people in the world. And so I think that's more valuable than any of his movies or anything. Yeah, I've read that a lot too. Uh, I would say waiting for Mike to get back on here. One other honorable mention is, uh, uh, oh God, I just looked him up. Uh, Andrew Devoff. Uh, great character actor, always playing like a bad guy, you know, was in The Wishmasters, The Djinn, uh, played uh, an anarchist in the show Lost. Um, guy speaks like eight different languages. Uh, and he too is one of those. Him and, uh, oh God, who's Hellboy? Um, oh, those Bob two. Roman? Yeah, both of them are in a lot of really bad movies, but are also fun actors. But they're also pretty leftist guys that throw out a lot of like leftist content and do a lot of good charity work and stuff. I wouldn't think of Ron per Perlman as a good actor in bad movies, but I think of him as an okay actor in not great movies. Well, it depends. I mean, you're when you cast Ron Perlman, you're casting him for a reason. You want him to be Ron Perlman. Yeah. But, like, you know, I thought he was maybe the best part of uh, Sons of Anarchy. Maybe we should do a list of actors who are just being themselves and everything. Yeah. Because yeah. I can name a few of them off the top of my head. Uh, well, I am going to go ahead and give my number one. I was going to save this one for Mike and see if he picked it because this is... But I can't let this guy not be on the list. My number one is Rucker Hauer. Fuck the balls. <laughs> um, Rucker Hauer has just been in a ton of really fun... He's a lot like Christopher Lambert. He's been in a ton of really fun movies that aren't particularly good. Like Surviving the Game. Uh, Split Second is one of my all-time favorite uh, action movies. Um... He was in, uh, he really briefly, he was in Sin City, um, Hobo with the Shotgun, uh, just all kinds of really weird kind of movies that he just had fun. I think he just died, like, what, three years ago, something like that? Yeah, just recently. I mean, not recently, but, like, not. Yeah, not, it, it hasn't been that long. I don't know. Rucker Hauer, I think, deserves, I, I think he's uh, in the same mm -hmm. league as... <laughs> Maybe like Danny Trejo and Christopher Lambert, too. I think they kind of just do the things that interest in them most. And and it gained them a lot of uh, fan favorites. It gained them a lot of cult status, I think. I think he's a good fit for this list. Because he is a good actor, but he... He's and yeah, he, was, he did some bigger name stuff. Like Lady Hawk was bigger. He, his, his scene in uh, uh, Blade Runner is arguably one of the most iconic moments in a movie out there all those moments will be lost in time like tears in rain the tears in the rain speech is yeah. known by almost every sci-fi fan oh yeah but... Jim how do you feel about Rutger Hauer me uh, yes he would be an excellent actor list just because of Blade Runner uh, and I love him in a lot of other movies uh, I love Lady Hawk um, uh, I feel like mostly over the last 20 years he's been doing kind of a uh, really a lot smaller parts in movies but I've always enjoyed him in most have you ever movies. had a chance to see Hobo with Shotgun? I have yeah. not. I have not had a chance to see Hobo with Shotgun. <laughs> I, would, I would recommend Split Second. If you're going to pick a, a Rucker Hauer movie that most people haven't seen, I would say Split Second. It's uh, uh, It's got its own little feel to it. It's this little dystopian movie with this sidekick who's kind of a goofball and this giant monster that you don't really find out a whole lot about. It's got very young Kim Cattrall in it. It's it's really good. Uh, uh, I remember... I think maybe I've seen this. It's been forever, though. Yeah. He runs on coffee and chocolate like the entire time. 
It takes place in London, and uh, like he said, it's it's a dystopian future where everything's uh, flooded. And... Yeah, sea levels have risen to the point to where London is flooding, which, in real life, you know, good luck, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it could be a thing. Give us about fifteen or twenty years, and. So the uh, while we're waiting for Mike, the uh, the cover of this uh, the split second box is taking me back to uh, I don't even know what, it was a far more. It was a business that was trying to compete against uh, Walmart for a while in the early '90s, and they committed massive fraud to prove their profitability. Um, but for a few few brief years, it was the yeah, best to rent movies. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, he's back. Show. Best place to rent movies in Des Moines. For like $2, you could get six movies. And nice. uh, a lot of weekends work. <clears throat> you said you got videos from the last video store. <clears throat> Was that the one on Merle Hay? Yep. By the come and go? Yep. It just closed a couple years ago, actually. Um, okay, so now that my stuff is working... Welcome back. It's down to you, Mike. You're number one. So my number one is, uh, I think I'll, I, I will show rather than tell. Um, because uh, this guy deserves a big entrance because he's great. I met him in person. I don't actually have my, uh, my picture that I can show, but the great Jeffrey Combs. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I have a problem with women yelling. Um, no. Jeffrey Combs has been in just about everything. He has multiple zeros on his IMDb page, which is a shame. Um, he has some pretty high rated stuff too. Um, uh, Dr. Mordred is a great movie. If you're a Marvel fan, um, Dr. Mordred is great because that was supposed to be a Dr. Strange movie. The Charles Band, who is the, you know, the, the main guy at, at Full Moon, got the rights to and then lost the rights to him. After he launched the rights, he was just like, well, I'll just keep making this movie and change his name to Dr. Mordred, uh, who is, of course, the uh, master of the unknown. <laughs> Which, when I met uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs, he was like, yeah, I don't even know what I'm the master of. <laughs> it's unknown. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, but I'm the master of it. But yeah. that, is, that is awesome. That makes me like him just for saying that. Yeah, he's a super, super nice guy. Really, really nice guy. Uh, he was in a movie called The Frighteners, which is a really fun Michael J. Fox like oh, yeah. haunted movie, but it's it's very tongue in cheek and very fun. Was Sutherland in that one too? No, I don't think so. No, it had uh, Jake Busey. Oh, okay. Who honestly, in the right light, you could confuse Jake Busey and Donald Sutherland or uh, Robert uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland anyway. Um, he's he's in tons of like really low budget stuff and high budget stuff. Uh, he was in another movie back in the nineties. That I liked a lot called The House on Haunted Hill, which is rated 31%, which is bullshit. Um, that was a really good horror movie. Is that the one with Liam Neeson in it? No, it, it had uh, uh, Jeffrey Rush and I think Tay Diggs and... Oh my god, that was an excellent Jeffrey Rush. Uh, yeah, Famke Jensen was in it. Uh, it had a really good cast. Uh, it, oh, Famke it, Jensen, she's another one that could be on this list. Uh, he was in Fear.com, which famously is a nearly 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, probably his big break was in uh, Reanimator, um, which has a 94%, which I'm kind of surprised by. Um, I like it a lot, but I, I don't know if other people did. Uh, it's it's a, you know just early, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, what was Fear.com? I think that was Stephen Dorff, wasn't it? Let me double check <laughs> Well, because I want because you just made me think of that movie where like the the angry dead spirits would come out of people's computers or whatever, and they had to like block off a room with red tape or whatever. Yeah, it was so it was uh, Stephen Dorff, Stephen Ray, Udo Kier. Udo Kier, by the way, probably should have been somebody's honorable mention. I have created the devil himself. Because he is great in terrible things. But not Stephen Dorff. He can't be on this list. I'll leave Stephen Dorff alone. Hasn't life done enough to him? (laughs) 
they're gonna beat up on Steven. I don't know, uh, Jim. I'm assuming you are not a Jeffrey Combs fan. Uh, I know that I've seen some of the films that he's in. I just I can't remember them. Him in them. I mean, he's he's in a lot of real low budget horror movies, but he does pop up in some good stuff. It is funny, like his role in uh, The House on Haunted Hill, which is sort of a semi tongue in cheek in some ways. Um, he's really scary in that movie. He plays like this ghost doctor who's like marching around the hallways, cutting people up. And um, yeah, he's good. In that. He's just good in everything. I don't know. He's a nice guy. And yeah, he's Jeffrey Combs. Kale, you probably are not as, as not a big horror fan. I'm sure you're not real big into Jeffrey or into uh, Jeffrey Combs. Is that right? I don't know that I know who he is, but I've heard of the things that you are speaking of. <laughs> Fair enough. Brian, do you have any final thoughts on Mr. Combs? I, I agree. I think he's good. Um, I was just trying to picture there's others that I are kind of like, like I think of uh, Jeffrey Combs and Brad Deeroff as ki- in kind of the same light, but yeah. All right. Uh, Kale, do you have any final thoughts on uh, good actors and bad movies? Anybody else that's sort of popped up when you thought about this? I will just circle back around to my opening statements, which was that, it's hard to find a good actor in a bad movie because if someone's a good actor, you tend to put them in good movies. But the reason that this list exists is because some people think they're making a good movie. So they put good actors in it and it turns out to not be a good movie. And it's up to us to decide what grade of how bad is it? I mean, is it okay? Is it shitty? Is it you know, not worth watching at all? And that's up to you. And that's what these lists are about. So right, these Jim, are... Need... Sorry. Sorry, Kim. Go ahead. No, you're done. I'm good. I'm done. Uh, uh, Jim, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah. So a little bit I'm with Kale. And I think for me, it just emphasizes how important good writing is, good directors are, good producers are. Um, I just watched 15 minutes of, I think, Death Race or something like that on the Sci Fi channel. And it's got, it's got a decent cast and it seriously it, it's what made me bring up the Danny Trejo movie that looked like it was made by kids in high school because that's the kind of directing it, it was getting like that's kids just parodying what's that no it's the it's the newer one with Jason Stratham and no. uh, yeah it's a dumb concept that's Brandon, the thing Brandon. sorry well you know and sometimes you have good actors just sometimes end up in bad movies and sometimes what people consider a bad movie really isn't my my go-to example and that would be uh the last action hero has charles dance in it and he's one of the best parts of that whole movie but i just had vanessa watch that one the other day that's that's a great it's a great. I, I love the movie. I love Charles Dance in it. I love uh, Schwarzenegger's good in it. Uh, Tom Noonan. Uh, all, all of. And if you accept that it's just there <coughs> in you, then you'll love it. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just a kind of sit back and have fun with it. Um, so I had three last ones that came up as I was sort of thinking about it and going through things. Three actors that I feel like we should have talked about that we didn't. Uh, and that is Eric Roberts, Jeff Fahey, and Louise Fletcher. Because um, I think they are all so good in so many movies, and they are in so many shitty movies. They all should have been honorable mentions for all of us. Um, so I don't, Louise I don't really... Fletcher is one of those ones that might be interesting because I think she just got typecast. Probably to some degree. I don't know that she could do a whole lot more. I mean, try and take her from Ratchet to being like, you know, Mother Superior or something. Who would buy it? I mean, very famously, you know, uh, uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest is one of those very few movies that won all five. You know, best actor, best actress, uh, uh, best screenplay, best director, and uh, best picture. You know, not very many movies <laughs> got all those. You um, just made me think of someone else. Uh, and I can't remember his name. I know I know his name, but I can't remember it right now. He was in The Substitute. and Oh, Tom Berenger. Yeah, Tom Berenger. <laughs> I feel like we have to cut off. Maybe we'll do another like top next five 
I think we've got a. We could even narrow it down because there's a lot of women that all of a sudden are coming to mind that I was thinking this should yeah. should have been on this list. Yeah, there's a bunch. Uh, so we apologize for the people we haven't talked about, um, but we're glad about the people we did, and we'll talk about more of them again. Uh, that being said, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a good drink. And have a good day. My child, if I thought the prophets wanted you to know the purpose of my visit, I would have informed you of it in advance.